But prior to 1994, basic health care was a luxury that many could not afford. This was one of the first issues Mandela addressed when he became president. In his State of the Nation address, he highlighted various projects that would help the poor. Children under the age of six and pregnant mothers will receive the free medical care in every state hospital and clinic where such need exists. At that time, 72 children out of every 1,000 died before they turned five. The mortality rate for black children was seven times that of whites. Millions benefited when the policy was introduced. And for these mothers and their babies, it was an indication that the country is changing. Later, the policy was extended to everyone at primary care level. response to that policy actually validated the need for the policy. All it said is that there were many, many, many people, South Africans, who in the past couldn't access services, particularly because they couldn't afford it. And all of a sudden, it is free of charge. The need is met. Um, and then you could see that the numbers of uh, people attending the facilities have just increased tremendously. The new democratic government inherited a health system that was deeply inequitable, while certain areas were well resourced. Other places had no or very little health facilities available. One of the first measures implemented was the creation of a unified public health system. Under Mandela's leadership, programs were started to build more clinics and upgrade the existing ones. The clinic building program often seems insignificant by the standards of those who have resources in abundance. But in the rural areas and sprawling urban settlements, this is a matter, literally, of life and death. The struggle against apartheid was over. The foundation for a reformed health system was laid. And it was time to take on a struggle of a different kind. At a time when the country was embroiled in a very difficult debate whether HIV causes AIDS, Mandela transcended those differences and boldly chose to lead the struggle. In July 2000, at the AIDS conference in Durban, he promised to direct the Nelson Mandela Foundation to get more involved in the battle against the virus. We have to rise above our differences and combine our efforts to save our people. History will judge us harshly if we fail to do so now and right now. You have said that you don't use words lightly and that I'm pretty sure you make very many great speeches in your life. But you haven't been here for the past week and you cannot imagine how your speech is music to our ears. It has uh, answered so many unspoken and spoken questions on our lips. It has still the torment in our hearts. In the months to follow, Mandela continued to advocate the importance of international leaders standing together to avert a global disaster. I've been able to meet a man who can measure up to Nelson Mandela. For all the obstacles he's overcome and all that he's achieved, he has never paused, rested or faulted in his dedication to correcting the inequities in his country and all around the world. Therefore today, I extend a challenge to all my fellow Americans and to the world at large to find and implement, we must find a solution for this pandemic. But in 2000, Mandela had to deal with his own illness. Shortly after his 83rd birthday, Madiba was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He had to undergo a seven-week course of radiotherapy. Fortunately, it was not life-threatening and the treatment was successful. He could also continue his work. Oh, Brandon, 
<laughs> Mandela also did a lot to break down the stigma. Not only did he ask people to openly speak about AIDS and not discriminate against people living with the disease, he also visited orphanages and centers where he actively engaged with them. Madiba recognized that the battle against AIDS and the stigma cannot be won without fighting against tuberculosis. Because HIV weakens the immune system, people with the virus are especially vulnerable to TB. He is also no stranger to TB. Mine was found in time. And uh, every time I got the opportunity, I announced that I did suffer from TB. I do so because, as you will have seen from the video, one of the things that kills people is not so much the disease, but uh, the stigma surrounding illnesses like TB, like HIV, like cancer. When AIDS activist and TAC founder Zahi Ahmad continuously refused to take antiretroviral drugs until the government introduced a pilot project, Madiba stepped in. At that stage, Ahmad's health was deteriorating rapidly. Madiba vowed to take the case forward by requesting a meeting with President Thabo Mbeki. Ahmad started taking ARVs a few months later. Mandela used many public occasions to highlight the importance of treatment and care for the most vulnerable. Two weeks before his meeting with Ahmad, Mandela and former U.S. President Bill Clinton called on world leaders at the AIDS conference in Barcelona, Spain, to help the poor fight AIDS. I ask all leaders in the world, is this acceptable? We know that there are treatments available which restore the immune system, which stop the opportunistic infections, especially TB, and which return AIDS sufferers to good health for several years at least. Is it acceptable that these dying parents had no hope of access to treatment? The simple answer is no. It was a collaboration that would continue. The two leaders were soon together again when the Nelson Mandela Foundation and Love Life forged a new partnership in the township Orange Farm south of Johannesburg. Clinton also brought actors Kevin Spacey and Chris Tucker with him as part of a tour through five African countries to promote AIDS awareness. Why is he still doing this? Because he's a great man, of course. But also because the older you get, the more you want things to work out for young people. The more you want every young person to have a good, normal life that doesn't end too soon. And this HIV problem is to me the most heartbreaking problem in the world because nobody has to die of it. Yet in South Africa, many of the worst affected nations, there is a window of opportunity. More than 40% of our population is today under 15 years of age and mostly still not sexually active. If we can dramatically reduce the rate of HIV infection among this population, we will have a real prospect of substantially curtailing the projected scale of the epidemic. Madiba continued mobilizing celebrities, world leaders and business to help him in raising funds to fight this pandemic. And with the annual 4664 concerts, AIDS awareness was taken to new levels. In July 2004, Madiba addressed 15,000 delegates at the International AIDS Conference in Bangkok, Thailand. He demanded strong leadership and support for the 4664 initiative. Okay. I call upon of all of you, every global citizen, not to forget. We must seize this opportunity to demonstrate that we share a common humanity and that it matters who my sister or brother is. 
we must never reduce the issue to statistics. But early in 2005, the father of the nation was hit by a tragedy. His son, Mahato Mandela, died of an illness related to AIDS. He called reporters to his home to make the announcement just hours after Mahato, a lawyer and father of four, died at a nearby hospital. AIDS activists applauded him for his openness. Let us give publicity uh, to HIV AIDS and uh, not to hide it because uh, the only way of making it appear to be a normal illness just like TB, uh, like cancer is always said to come out and to say somebody has, has died because of uh, uh, HIV and people will stop regarding it as something extraordinary. And his efforts did not go unnoticed. In 2006, the University of Massachusetts presented Mandela and his wife Grasa Michelle with honorary degrees for their work in improving the lives of people. It was one of many degrees and awards he would receive in his lifetime. You are a hero to all people who value freedom and dignity and justice. Your principled opposition to tyranny and injustice inspired us in decades past. It inspires us today and will inspire our sons and daughters for generations to come. You are truly a beacon of hope for our time and for all time. For his 88th birthday, Mandela and Bill Clinton teamed up once again, this time to raise funds for poor children with heart problems at the Walter Sisulu Cardiac Center. Madiba received a special birthday gift. The doctor said, and then when you said it cost a uh, hundred thousand rand a child to care for somebody. And we do a